So I've got to a really exciting point in the power meter build. I'm actually getting something useful out of it and signal wise. I was experimenting earlier with the uh, Wheatstone bridge directly measuring across it with the multimeter and uh, I was able to get 1.2 millivolts plus or minus about 0.2 bending the crank so it showed that the strain gauges were functioning um, so I then turned to the amplifier here which I made for it I'm using different resistors on this one um, so I decided to put that aside for the moment and go back to the original amplifier that I made for the other power meter um, there was a mistake on the soldering on that one so I made another one but I fixed that now and uh, connected it up I'm powering it from this battery pack which is at about 7.5 volts at the moment the Arduino there is providing the 5 volts across the strain gauges and unfortunately the output of the amplifier was about 4.9 volts so I've had to use a voltage divider but I'll fix that with resistors and offsets and so on later so that's feeding into the A0 and displaying on the computer there as you can see if I bend the crank one way it increases and the other it decreases and then stabilizes out I mean it's a bit uh, of interference on at the moment because there's no zero smoothing on the the voltage I put a bit of uh, smoothing code on that and again the fairly typical kind of plus or minus one on the value um, so I sort of expect that especially as everything's sitting out here in the open And I'm still getting a good response to bending the crank as well. Nice and responsive. And it should settle back down to its original value as well, which it is nicely. Although I should really do a proper full load test on it to uh, prove that. So you a very gentle pushing on the crank really compared to what your foot can do but uh, yeah it looks very good so far I've uh, bit by bit been adding pieces from the parameter code and this is now it uh, zero out on um, startup and I'm just interested to see how well it will stay around the zero so uh, this is zero there so it's currently running at about plus one and a half or something um, so we'll see how that goes over time just gradually working my way up to the full working code and um, of course first I'll have to put all this uh, into the crank um, but uh, it's looking very promising so far doesn't seem to be too much of a drift on it well, when I say there's not much drift, actually, this morning, since I've turned it on, it's been all the way down to minus 170. It's gone back up to it's around minus 160 something at the moment. So I'm not sure what's going on there. It's not really very really good, but it could be to do with the temporary wiring and also the fact that I'm powering half of it off the laptop. So it'll be a lot better when it's all coming off one battery pack. And for that, I have bought this little two-cell pack here. I know it's really meant for drones and high current applications, but it should still work. And just in case I have any little accidents, I've got a protection board here. Just It should protect against the short circuits. What I've also been working on, which took quite some time, was to try different resistors across different strain gauges and that is to change the balance of the Wheatstone bridge and what I've done is take it across the zero point so that now when I push on the crank in a positive power in the bike direction it gives a positive value so what I had to do was try different resistors and try swapping these wires around 
and it was quite difficult because you can very easily hit the limit of the amplifier so what you end up getting out is nonsense really either it just goes straight to the to full output or you get nothing out of it but uh, I'm not quite happy that I have now got the uh, zero force value to be around about the sort of 100 to 200 mark which is quite important obviously you want the parameter to be able to pick up a uh, upward pull on the crank as well so I can show you um, if I disconnect this wire the value drops down also to its minimum and that is currently at around minus 220 and we were up at around minus 150 so it could probably do with being a bit more but at the moment because I've got so much drift it's difficult to set it up properly I'm also going to see if I can get the other amplifier to work this more compact version here now that I know I'm getting a sensible value from the Wheatstone bridge I can see if I can get that running the amplifier now working, the new one that I made, which is good. It's got different resistors and it did upset the balance a bit. I'm not quite sure why. There's feedback between the two. I mean, I suppose it makes sense. So I've changed the, the resistor here to an even lower value this time. And the value is around about the middle of the range. I got rid of the automatic zeroing thing on startup because that was just confusing matters. So this is now the raw value coming from the Arduino. It's 0 to 1024. And I've got it around about halfway at the moment in the range. I was hoping to get a bit lower. I did try it lower, down around 300, but uh, the amplifier seemed to lose its um, sensitivity in a big way. So still got to investigate that, but uh, even so, that shouldn't be too much of an issue. I'm now happy enough with the output of the amplifier that I think it's time to move on with the wiring and get it all uh, reduced down into more compact size so it can either fit on or inside the crank. So that means I will replace this battery pack with this one. Also get the Arduino to run off that battery pack as well so I don't need the 5 volt USB anymore. But that also means I need to give the Arduino uh, wireless communication. So for that I will be using NRF 24L01 module and uh, that will all be coming up in a next video. And that's it for this one. Thank you for watching.